he, he did not have whiskey dick. It was just a really fucking small penis that I did not feel at all. <laughs> like it was really tiny. Your wardrobe screams fatherless. You have more trust in that top side than people. How was your relationship with your father? Nice. Just saying, why did you get the attention you wanted? You need Jesus. That's offensive. All right. Hello, my offenders. Wow, I am really turning it on right now. I am just turning on my brave little face because you know what's been happening to me in the past week? Um, actually, it's like just been it's just been the past month of just thing after thing after thing um, where this morning I got my Instagram deleted. I uh, and someone told me it was for bullying because I said I love this little bitch about my dog wubs and my whole account's gone. Um, so, you know, having to get that one back, my backup Instagram got deleted for impersonating myself. And since I already submitted my ID for my main account, I can't do it for my second account. So I'm having to figure out a special way to get my backup account back, which is so fucking crazy. I also got my TikTok deleted a week ago for violating community guidelines. It didn't tell me what guidelines I was violating. And in fact, I haven't had a violation in over two months for both Instagram and TikTok. I was paying money for ads every week and I stopped getting in trouble. But I guess that just does not matter to the social media world because a lot of employees are taking money from girls to get, you know, their accounts back. However, they're also the same people deleting girls accounts. It's fucking extortion, you know what I'm saying? Um, and Instagram and TikTok both need to do better. Like a, a thousand percent need to do better because in what world does it make sense to delete someone's account before even giving them a violation? Not even having a warning about what the fuck I'm doing wrong. And if I got deleted for anything sexual, Instagram would have told me, you're deleted for sexual solicitation. And I didn't get that. And TikTok would have been taking my videos down for sexual activity, which they haven't in, I think, over three months. And my last violation was actually for hate speech, where I told someone who was bullying me to get off my live, and they took me down for hate speech. So that is my world of social media right now. Um, and by the time this podcast comes out, I'm already going to have my accounts back um, because I don't want to post any podcast episodes without having my Instagram because... That doesn't really make a lot of sense now, does it? To not have my biggest platform be able to promote it. I mean, I guess my biggest platform is TikTok, but you know, TikTok is really inconsistent with pushing out your videos and not pushing out your videos, but you know, that is where I'm at. And I was crying this morning and while well, taking a shit, I take sad shits, I get anxious shits um, before coming here. So I was 20 minutes late to recording this podcast, but it's fine because I am here and I am going to exploit my sadness for you guys, for my offenders, for my audience. So, you know, I am here. I am here. I was going to say I don't really want to be, but I don't know what the fuck else I would be doing. So <laughs> I am here. Actually, I'd be cuddling with wubs. I should have brought wubs. Um, and, you know, I've I've also been doing a lot of healing work. And if anyone has done work on themselves or done healing work, it is God fucking awful. It is awful. And um, I was already having an awful day yesterday because my uh, life coach was having me tell her basically start to finish all my trauma around like my eating disorder around the way I look around my parents around being sent to rehab and kidnapped to go there and my mom calling the cops on me at school and I went over everything from like start to finish and I was already in an awful mood after that because it brought up obviously so many emotions and so much anger and then the cherry on top was my Instagram being deleted this morning and I probably won't have it for seven days seven days isn't bad I've had it gone for like two or three months but um you know, my birthday is coming up and I want to be able to make money from Instagram and TikTok on my OnlyFans. And my OnlyFans revenue is really fucking far down because I am not getting all of this new traffic every single day. So um, that's where I'm at right now. And I'm also having like a really emotional podcast episode today. So <sighs> put your seatbelts on and we are going for a fucking ride. Um... <laughs> 
So (laughs) let's get into it, because by the time this podcast comes out, I am going to have uh, the podcast I did with That's a Dex come out. And I wanted to clear the air on some things um, because I got really frazzled when he started giving me a little bit of pushback. And it was respectful pushback. But, you know, there was a little back and forth and a little bit of pushback. And I, you know, I got frazzled and I don't think I said what I meant to say. Uh. What I meant to say is like, er, okay, so here's what I said. I basically said everyone should have a hoe face. (laughs) And what I meant to say is everyone should have a hoe face who wants to have a hoe face. Like if someone literally feels no need or urge to have a hoe face, like absolutely do not have one. But if you're feeling a little promiscuous, a little slutty, just like you want to fuck a lot of people and get it out of your system, absolutely do it. What I was trying to say is like, don't have shame in having your little hoe phase if you want to have it. Because I know with my experience with my hoe phase, like, I mean, there were some guys I really liked hooking up with and I really liked the game and I liked the chase. I don't know why I love the chase with men. Um, I like to be the one who hits on them first. I like to be the one who texts them first, like shows my interest, all that fun stuff. Um, So with the chase, I I really liked that aspect. And as much as I liked that aspect, I also came across a lot of fucking douchebags. And um, a lot of guys didn't make me feel very good about myself. But, you know, for me, it was monumental and like becoming who I am and learning about myself and all that fun jazz. But um, on the other hand, there is my friend Mikey, who she goes on a lot of dates. You know, she dates around. And for her, it's all about like learning what she likes, learning what she doesn't like, getting to know new people, getting to have new experiences. And like, although I don't find that to be hoish. I mean, I don't know. I think hoe is like an endearing term. So, OK, it is hoish. But like a lot of men would be like, oh, what a hoe. She's going on all these dates. No, it's it's literally just exploring yourself. And she wanted to do it. So that's what she's doing, you know. Um, so that that was my point. <laughs> um, Um, But my point is, if you don't want to have a hoe phase, don't, because it's not going to be fun if you don't want to have one in the first place. But if you do want to have one, I say absolutely fucking do it. (laughs) And I know one of Dax's points was like, would you tell your child (laughs) to like do this stuff? Well, first of all, I never want kids. Um, (laughs) Second of all, I feel like if I were to have a kid, I'd want that like open communication. Like, well, why do you want to do it? Do you want to do it for the right reasons? Are you doing it to like nourish yourself? And like, if that's the case, they should be having a hoe phase. And I would just be like, hey, use protection because I I don't think enough parents are like, use a condom. They're just like, don't have sex. Um, But I am really stoked with how my podcast with Dax came out because um, I'm really working on being able to like, articulate myself with people who don't agree with me and I still got pretty frazzled in the episode if you can't tell is something that I'm actually working on um so that was a big step in the right direction because I usually just freeze up and try to like change the subject when like people don't agree with me or I don't agree with them and like ah, I'm, I'm just really proud of myself and me and him are both really respectful and having our differences of opinions I don't feel like either of us were too forceful and too pushy and when I started feeling awkward I did change the subject although I feel like I wanted to ask some more questions but um that was a step for me like that was a huge step um I also just got to mention I feel like right now I'm just giving all of my life updates before I get into like the topic of this episode but I got to live out my dream my absolute dream by flying to New York uh to be on Barstool on a Barstool podcast <laughs> and um that was like the highlight of my whole month because everything else about this month has been so fucking shitty but that was great so now maybe barstool might notice me and try to sign me who knows i'm just putting that out there because i would fucking love that (laughs) uh but i seriously (laughs) i need to mention this for the people who live in new york y'all y'all are a different fucking breed new york is the most disgusting grimy uh, ick ick place i have ever been to like i live in la and it's like downtown la but everywhere that i went like it, it it's just the bottom of the bottom disgusting and grimy <laughs> like there's trash every single street it's just on the fucking sidewalk like where are your trash cans every single corner at least one spot on every block i went on smelled like piss i was drinking my matcha 
and gagged and almost threw up because the smell of piss was so fucking strong. And I was in Manhattan, by the way. And that's how bad the smell of piss was. Um, not to mention, they, why don't the restaurants know about food intolerances? I went to a Starbucks. They are a global company. Like, they're everywhere. And I was asking about their little egg muffins because I hadn't eaten yet. And I was like, hey, is this egg muffin dairy free? And they're like, no, but this one is dairy free. I took one small little bite. I was like, wait, this, this tastes like cheese. I look it up and there was cheese, milk and cream all in that little egg muffin. And I went up to them and I was like, yo, there is cheese in this. And they were like, oh, like, so you're intolerant, intolerant. And I was like, yes. Why else would I say that? I was like, fuck, do I need to like go throw up now? And they're like, well, how bad are you? And I'm like, well, if I don't throw up now, I'm going to throw up later. So then I had to throw up in a Starbucks bathroom, violently yakking because, you know, I was forcing myself to throw up because if I didn't, then, you know, I was going to do it on the Barstool podcast and I I wanted to actually look good on that podcast. So um, then when I came out of the bathroom, everyone was staring at me like I was I mean, I was bulimic, but not not right now. So that was like a really fun experience in New York. Just really fun. Everything uh, in the pedestrians, the pedestrians are wild and the cars almost hit you like every Uber I went in almost hit four people. I got car sick in every single Uber. I'm like, how the fuck do people get around? I think that's why everyone walks because driving is fucking awful. Um. I did get to hang out with a homeless lady for a little bit and she was cool. Um, she had like a sign that she was like a victim of domestic violence and I was going to walk past her and I'm like, nah, nah, I can't. So I gave her all the food in my backpack or almost all of it. I, I left one snack for me on the airplane and then I just talked to her for a little bit and my dumbass, you know, she was homeless. I don't even know if she had a phone, but I was giving her tips to grow on TikTok since she is homeless. I'm like, tell your story, grow on TikTok, create a go and fund me so everyone can donate money and you'll get off the streets in no time. <laughs> she didn't even tell me if she had a phone, dude. Ah, uh, you know, because the homeless people in LA, they do have phones. A lot of them do have phones. So that's just, that's where I was coming from. Anyways, on on to the next subject. Um, oh, this this one this one is great. Um, I guess I'm a little fucking disgusting. Um, and I'm just outing myself because I thought that like people washing their like utensils after every fucking meal, I thought they were just like being really dramatic. Um, <laughs> and like <laughs> doing the most. <laughs> and um i would like reuse my forks for like sometimes a few days before i'd wash them because i'm like i was too lazy to fucking wash them and throw them in a dishwasher and then take them out and um i found out that could be a really big cause for a lot of my stomach issues and still feeling sick even though i believe the mold is gone um and i did eat i did eat like a little spoon of moldy sea moss because like i thought i saw molds but it was like only four days old like only four days open the sea moss i'm like there's no way it can already be moldy after four fucking days and no it was yeah no it, it was definitely a little moldy um had to throw that shit away because my stomach is still upset <laughs> um a lot of my pain is from my you know just my own actions and my own decisions um, but the stuff like Instagram and TikTok, that is just like, that is just so out of my control and shame on those platforms, shame on them. Um, <laughs> but okay. So I might have to like explain why I, uh, <laughs> why I thought that like people were just being dramatic about, you know, washing their forks after every meal. I know I read somewhere that like, you should be exposing yourself to all the bacteria possible to like build a strong immune system. And I don't remember where I found that. And I don't think it was scientifically proven or backed up or anything, but I just wanted to believe that for my own like dirty, disgusting habits. Like I, I do have some dirty, disgusting habits that are just like not cleaning like me myself as a person, like I'm, I'm clean. I wash my hair every few days. Every time I poop, I rinse off or almost every time I poop. If I have the opportunity to rinse off after I poop, I do. Um, so me as a person clean, my apartment, messy and disgusting. Um, but this whole expose yourself to as much bacteria as possible to like build your immune system. Bullshit. Absolutely bullshit. Cause my immune system is weak and it hasn't helped at all. I 
Do you think it might be making me a little sick? And you might be asking, Adelia, like you make a good amount of money. Like, why do you not hire a maid? And here is why I haven't hired a maid. Um, in San Diego, it was a lot easier because I had a two bedroom apartment. There was a lot of room. And um, here I'm, I'm a chronic napper. I nap all the fucking time. And I never really know when I'm going to nap. It's just when I'm feeling so fucking exhausted that I like need to nap. And I have a tiny one bedroom in L.A. while I'm waiting to move into my house. So I'm like, let's just say the maid is coming for the day. Where in the fuck do I nap? Like, she's going to have to be cleaning my sheets, like, helping do my laundry, like, putting stuff away. Like, it's going to be a whole day's work work for her. So what do I do when I need to nap? Like, that is, it. you know, maybe I should focus on cleaning my apartment so maybe I don't, like, feel as sick or whatever. Um, maybe that should be my priority. But, like, in my head, I'm napping. Like, when I have a house, think about all the rooms I'll have to nap in. I'm looking at a three bedroom right now. I can just take my pillow in the other room. I can nap on the couch. Like there are so many areas to nap in, but I just have a tiny little one bedroom right now where there is nowhere to nap and nowhere to fucking hide. Um, so, and I feel the need to say this. There is not a bone in my fucking body that is disgusted by the way I live. And I wish there was a bone in my body that was disgusted at all, but I'm really not. I'm really not. Um... <laughs> here's i know i need a change this is like my intervention like look i know i know i need help i am getting the help we are gonna change we are gonna work on making me a better person and um i've, I've literally been like this since i was a child my mom would try to ground me for being messy and i'm like okay i'll be grounded like i would rather be grounded and live in my mess than clean even in college when i was really poor I mean, I wasn't like super, super poor. My parents gave me a pretty good allowance. But, you know, uh, I, I used my money to hire my friends to clean my place for me because I had no idea what the fuck I was doing. I couldn't do it. I, I can't do it. I physically and mentally am unable to, to do it. Um, so, you know. Oh, this is actually funny to mention. <laughs> When I was in college, this is when the habit of like reusing my forks and plates started because my roommates would always get in fights about like whose dirty dishes are these in the sink? And I always knew it wasn't mine because I'd reuse the same plate in the same fork multiple times before I washed it because it was never my shit in the sink. <laughs> and um, to me, that was just, you know, being like smart, like, hey, it's not mine. Look, this is my mess. It's in my room. <laughs> fuck man i need to i need to like grow up a little bit it's fine whatever we're good um so kind of going into the subject for today's podcast i already know i'm gonna cry it's fine because i've been crying all morning already and i cried yesterday and i cried the day before but um so i went on michael certain's podcast and uh i really did not expect to publicly talk about being sexually assaulted for the first time <laughs> on someone else's podcast it's fine it's fine i was like i'm the queen of trauma dumping <laughs> and that was uh, just, you know, it's something I also want to address on mine. I'm kind of glad I was able to talk about it on someone else's podcast first. Um, just cause it got to like open the door of like people kind of asking me questions and me self-reflecting a little bit before talking on mine. Um, but let's me first talk about the whirlwind that happened on the way to Michael's fucking podcast. Um, because about two hours to my drive in, my car tire popped just on the freeway going 70 miles per hour. And my car started swerving. I was so lucky there wasn't anyone next to me because my car was going like wee woo wee woo. And it felt like it was happening for a few minutes. It was probably only 30 seconds, but like, you know, it felt like a long time. And then my brakes weren't working um, because I lost control of my car, which was sick. So then I like pulled over to the side uh, after I kind of got control over my car, I just like obviously wasn't pressing the gas at all. And then when I got to the side, like the, the brakes still weren't working. So I tried the emergency brake and thank God my car stopped. And I was like shaking and crying and had to call AAA and AAA came and had to come down a crying Adelia, which isn't even in their job description. Um, but yeah, they had a, they had a calm down a crying Adelia. And I was just like, you have no idea. Like I almost died. I almost died. Um, I was like upset for a while and then I pushed myself to drive all the way to the podcast hill and make it because I don't like to flake and I don't like to bail. Um, so did all of that shit. 
<laughs> uh, <laughs> and here's the thing, a trauma dump because of how hyped I was on the adrenaline. Even right now, I honestly think my best podcasts are when I'm really mentally unstable. Um, because like the adrenaline just makes me trauma dump and keep talking. And like, it honestly flows a lot better than when I'm really nervous. Like right now I'm not nervous about doing this podcast. Cause like in the back of my head, I'm thinking, fuck these people on Instagram and like wanting to cry. So this is like something I really wanted to, cause it's a great distraction. Um, but I do think my best podcasts are the ones I just like, I'm having a little adrenaline rough fucking day. Cause I'm getting my anger out on the podcast. <laughs> um, and here's here's the fun part. This is actually when my bad luck started. I don't know if that's like when the star of Mercury and retrograde was. Oh my god, I already feel myself tearing up. I'm gonna snap myself out of it because I need to wait till like I actually talk about <laughs> the, the rough shit. But um, I injured my hip from the whiplash. It's still injured. I still haven't been able to like work out. Um, and you know it fucking sucks because like. I'm feeling kind of chubby. I'm not really feeling like I look like myself. And it's like I wasn't able to work out because of the mold poisoning. Now I'm not able to work out because of my hip. And even last year when I was able to work out, I was so puffy from the mold poisoning that like I just really miss how I used to look. And it's like I just want to have the energy to like get my body back to where it used to be. Um, and uh, I kept re-injuring my hip doing the dumbest shit. Like, I needed to make OnlyFans content. So what did I do? I, I was like, let me fuck a dildo. Re-injured my hip. And I did that for my fans. That was all for you guys. But I re-injured my hip to make fucking content. And then when my hip started feeling better a little bit, I was like, okay, great TikTok idea. I want to take everyone golfing with me. So we're like little golf skirts, blah, blah, blah. You know, you know what golfing, the golf swing, you know, entails? using your fucking hips. I re-injured it doing that. I also re-injured it, surprisingly, on the plane coming back from New York. By the way, I am 5'2". Why the fuck were my knees touching the seat in front of me as a 5'2 person? I have never had that issue before. Never. What The, the guy next to me, he was definitely taller than me. You know what he had to do? His knees had to be like spread out. And he wasn't even tall. He was probably like 5'9". And his like he had to like spread out his legs a little bit. I'm like, what what the fuck? What the fuck, Delta? Because then I re-injured my hip because of the pressure of my knees having to hit the the seat in front of me. So then my hip started hurting again. Um so it's like I wanna start flying I, I wanna start flying like, you know, first class and all that fun stuff, but like that shit is expensive. And when I have to pay to get, you know, my TikTok recovered or my Instagram recovered, uh, you know, I don't necessarily have the extra fucking cash to be paying for first class. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, but I did want to kind of discuss me feeling chubby because, uh, you know, the wise words of Drew Afuelo, God, I love you. I love you, bitch. I love you. <laughs> The, um, she is like fat isn't a bad word like stop thinking it's a bad word it is not an insult when you call me fat because it, it's it's not supposed to be a bad word like society has just made being skinny like the thing to be but it's like some people are just naturally thicker like you know they're just fat and like fat is not a bad word and um I've been trying to like uh reframe my thinking and it's like, OK, I might be a little bit chubby at the moment for me, but it's like not necessarily a bad thing. Um, you know, I'm like definitely content with it. It's like not my dream body, but like I'm content. I'm like working on acceptance. And truthfully, when I wrote this little script, I had to like make some edits. I was feeling pretty confident with the fact that I was feeling, quote unquote, like chubby. Um, today, I'm struggling with everything. So I'm struggling with my face, my hair, my body. I feel like my butt is shrink because I haven't been able to work out. So I'm struggling, but I really am working on like reframing my thinking to not think of being called fat or being fat or being chubby. Like I'm just trying not to think of it as a bad word or an insult because like it shouldn't be. Um. So when I was like reframing my thinking, I was like, 
you know, people calling me fat or chubby on TikTok isn't really having the same effect on me as it used to. It used to like drive me fucking crazy. I'm like, look at me, like, where is the fat? Like, I mean, there, you know, there is some, but I would like want to be skinny so fucking badly that I'm, I would try to like prove myself. And now I'm just like, okay, you think I'm chubby? Okay, you may think I'm chubby. The next person might not. It's all about, you know, whoever's looking at you. Someone might think I'm the ugliest person they've ever seen and another person might think I'm beautiful. So, it, it all kind of depends on how I think of myself and how I present myself. And I'm really working on being like, all right, you beautiful, no matter if you have a few extra pounds on you or if you don't have an extra few pounds on you. And like, it's just something I've been working on a lot. Um, it's crazy because like a month ago, I was feeling so much more confident than I am right now. But I think it's just because I feel like I have no control over my life and no power over my life with social media keep getting deleted and just no control over how OnlyFans is going, the recession, like, you know, school shootings. I just I feel so out of control in so many areas in my life and other people's lives. And I just want to scream and shout and feel heard. Um, but I'm going a little off topic here. <laughs> um, I also just want to address like on kind of like the chubby fat not being a bad word and people need to stop using it as a fucking insult. Um, I want to address the argument that all fat people are unhealthy and that is simply not true. <laughs> Someone can be lifting 200 pounds and be ripped and shredded and have abs and be more unhealthy than the person who is overweight. Like it's really just subjective to everyone's bodies. And I do know a lot of... Um, fat people get shamed at like doctor's offices because they're like, all of your problems are because you're fat. And they're like, nope, nope, I am having other fucking issues. So um, my heart does go out to all the people that deal with that. I dealt with that, not with the same issue, just with like the mold poisoning, but um, fat or chubby people are like, stop, stop looking at them as like this unhealthy group of people. Cause it's just, it's not always the case. You know, people should like, like, what about that ripped guy on fucking steroids? Like, that's not healthy, you know? Think of it, think of it like that. Um, so I'm about to get into the deep shit, but just some other updates in my life. Um, I just retested for my mold poisoning, although I do think it's going to come up that I have mold because the day that I took my mold test, I ate the moldy sea moss. And to be fair, the sea moss already looks mossy. So like the mold just didn't really look it just it blended in man it blended in how did it get moldy in less than a week um so uh it also could just be from me reusing like forks and knives i don't reuse plates though because i learned my lesson with that i i need paper plates and i'm probably gonna have to switch to like plastic forks and knives just because of my inability to clean and um if they're bad for the environment but i also have to focus on my health and what i'm like physically able to do <laughs> um another little update i'm stopping my birth control of over 10 plus years um that i've been on to and i, and I got on it mainly well one, i don't want to get pregnant Ew, that's fucking disgusting but two i also got on my birth control because i have a lot of symptoms of endometriosis i've never been like actually tested so i'm looking to get tested soon but it's like when i used to get my periods i'd be like throwing up and convulsing on the floor and every period i've ever had has been such a traumatic experience <laughs> um that you know I, I there's just some stuff i need to work on with that uh just my internalized trauma <laughs> of periods but i'm getting off my birth control because i guess uh there's a lot of long-term effects that birth control can cause because when it fucks up your hormones you can get early dementia which is not actually something that the like the doctors told me when i was on it they just told me i could like lose bone density and i'm like okay i work out it's probably not going to happen to me but it's like dementia that is that is definitely something i'm scared of or um oh that that's the one that scared me i don't remember the other ones but i was told quite a few things that can happen and i don't i don't <laughs> i don't i don't want those to happen so i have also been feeling a little crazy because i've been on these hormones for 10 years and getting off of them has also been like another fucking detox and my body is trying to like stable out. And I guess the stabilization of my hormones might take three months just, you know, getting off of the pill or the, the shot. Um, I am also looking for doctors who will be down to tie my tubes. Um, that is something I've wanted to do for a really long time. Um, I never want kids. I never want to get pregnant. I know it's really hard to find doctors that will tie your tubes because I am like pretty young. Um, 
and I haven't had any kids. So it's going to take a lot of convincing to be like, hey, tie my tubes, please. And thank you. But I like don't want to like ever even have the possibility of getting pregnant without being on birth control. And here's my biggest pet peeve. Everyone out there, everyone, look at me, look at me, look at me. If you're listening to this podcast, hear my voice. Stop fucking telling me you might change your mind when you're older. Stop it. Stop it. I want to chop everyone's head off who fucking says that. Stop telling me that I'll change my mind when I'm older about wanting to have kids. You know what? Let's just say I get my tube side. Guess what? If I have enough money, I can pay for a surrogate. I can pay for a surrogate, take those little eggs out of my fucking ovaries and have someone else be pregnant because I don't want to get pregnant. Like that is my last fucking resort. However, I do want to get my tube side even more now because I want to protect older Adelia from ever even having the possibility of getting pregnant. Like, hey, older Adelia, don't get weak on me. We hate kids. Kids make me nauseous. Being in a child's presence makes me physically want to throw up. And that is something I have felt for many, 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 many years. Even when I did pageants and there were the younger girls who would always like look up to me because I was like the crowned like Miss California or whatever. The little the little kids, I had no idea how to interact with them. I hated being around them. I like they, they, they can't control their emotions. They cry all the time. It's like I cry enough as it is. I don't I don't how do I contain a little kid crying when I can't even contain myself crying? Like, no. Even when I get older, not something I want to deal with. You know what I can deal with is a dog. And you know what? Dogs love you unconditionally. A child, they hit their middle school years, their teen years, they hate you. <laughs> that No, it's not going to be my life. So stop. Stop telling me I'm going to change my mind. Like, no, 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 no. No, no not going to do it. Please, someone, if a doctor's listening, tie my tubes. Tie my tubes. Sterilize me. I, I need it. Um... Also, the potential Roe versus Wade being overturned um, is absolutely terrifying. And no woman should be forced to have a baby if she does not want to. I don't care if you guys think that that baby is a living, breathing thing. It's not. It's literally still a fetus, a clump of cells in this woman's uterus. Most abortions are still cells, still clumps of cells with not even a fully developed brain. The abortions that usually are like a more developed kid are optomic i believe that's what it's called optonic pregnancies where the pregnancy is a risk to the woman's health so you're basically saying a baby that isn't even born yet with no fucking personality is more important than the woman who is living breathing and has a personality isn't that isn't that fucking crazy isn't that fucking crazy um <laughs> anyways anyways Oh, my last point about that is if Roe versus Wade is overturned, then we have a lot more than just women's rights to be worried about because Roe versus Wade was passed because of like the right to privacy. And there's a lot of people protected under the right to privacy. And if people's religion is being implemented in the government in that way, it's going to be implemented in the government in other ways. So people should be terrified. And um, these politicians... <laughs> These politicians, if any any of these very Republican right wing politicians that are against abortions are listening to me, hey, look at me. Chop your dick off. Go fuck yourself. Like, literally, I wish the worst things in life for you. The worst. The worst. No, hate you. Hate you. Um, all right. Wow. This has just been like a podcast full of my trauma dumping so far, but I do think it's a good episode of me trauma dumping. So um, let's get into my true drama. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> my life coach says I laugh instead of crying because it's like a trauma response, but I feel like laughing is better. <laughs> All right, you know. Um, I feel like it's important to note that while I really enjoyed my time fucking around in college, specifically my freshman year, not really a lot other years, and fucking a good amount of dudes. <laughs> there were some times I just didn't really know how to handle myself. And I think a lot of girls can relate. Um, and let me just explain with a little bit of context. You know, my church always told me don't have sex until marriage. My parents told me stop wearing slutty clothes or men are going to take advantage of you. My friends had the talk with me, like, don't get pregnant and don't be a fucking idiot, as all friends should. If you don't have friends doing that, get better friends, man. <laughs> um, but no one had to talk with me about 
setting boundaries and consent until I got into sex work, surprisingly. <laughs> um, and it was definitely something I had no idea about going into college. Um, like, I mean, I understood kind of like the basis of consent, but it's like I didn't know that I could re rescind consent from any time, even, you know, if I was butt naked with a guy or if I was in bed with a guy like I could rescind consent. And that's just something I feel like didn't really click in my brain. Um, and here's the thing. I loved being a little whore in college. Like, <laughs> I love like, you know, there were some men that I really did love being a whore with. Like, I really did like the game. I liked fucking new guys every single weekend. I literally thought that's like what freshman year was about. I thought it was about exploring your options, seeing who was out there. And although for me, there wasn't anyone good out there, it was like cool to be able to see that I absolutely hate most men. <laughs> at least as like fuck buddies, as friends, I honestly do like a lot of guys, but as like, especially at the University of Arizona, the amount of like racist Republicans over there. Oof, man, I should have had better standards, but I, I really did like being a whore with some of the guys. And, you know, there were some I didn't. <laughs> uh, I just I really wish someone would could have had like a talk with me and say that, like, it was literally OK to change my mind, even if he was hard and about to put his dick in me or I just like wanted to go to sleep or um, to literally just leave. <laughs> and um, I also would have told Adelia, younger Adelia, to have a job that I worked more hours at. Um, so that if I wanted to leave, I had the power to, and I would have the money to, because I was working th anywhere from like three to six hours a week, making $8 an hour. And like, if I worked more it's cause I was like covering people's shifts. And if I didn't work more, it was, um, just because it was like, I, my shift, I think only worked like three or two or three hours a week, which was crazy. So I was making <laughs> like about anywhere from like 24 to like maybe $40 a week. And then I was even taxed on that. <laughs> so I would have told Adelia, be prepared. Like, don't get yourself in situations you can't get out of. Um, so I'm not really sure why I felt like I couldn't just leave or rescind consent or any of that. I just, I really felt like I couldn't. And there were definitely some men that I would just hook up with and want to throw up after because of my personal inability to say no. And, um, I also want to point out that these guys I'm talking about only one, I think, did something wrong. But the other guys, like they didn't know that I wasn't feeling it anymore. I didn't express I wasn't feeling it anymore. Um, <laughs> you know, they, they would have no real indication that I wasn't feeling it as much because I just did not communicate that with them. Um, so, you know, they're they're not at fault. I, I like just want to make that clear. Um, it was it was just like the weirdest thing because I'd be so scared of their reaction if i was like actually i don't really want to fuck anymore like i was just so scared of that um and i i wish i wasn't because what what i say i'm not really into it anymore and he gets mad at me like okay why why would i care about what he thinks if he's getting mad because i don't want to fuck you know like bye <laughs> bye um and that inability to say no <laughs> really created a lot of confidence issues for me. And um, I, I really don't think because it's like I know I talk about how I had my whore phase in college and how a lot of men kind of made me not feel confident. And it's like. I, I don't think it was like just it wasn't just like the fucking men that made me feel unconfident. It was just the fact that like I couldn't express myself. I couldn't listen to my intuition. I couldn't speak up for myself. I feel like it was more that than like the fucking the men <laughs> and like granted some of the men yeah they definitely made me feel like shit when i fucked them but like i i wouldn't say it was all of them and like i don't want to just paint my whole freshman year as like oh it was so fucking awful when i was fucking all these guys like my whole freshman year wasn't awful like i had some fun experiences with guys and i also had some fun not so fun experiences just like dating in general um <laughs> oh my god <laughs> there <laughs> There was one concert where I was grinding with this man who I remember he like had told me he was down for me before and I think I'd like run away from him and like this one concert I remember just like letting him grind on me and I remember like not really being into it but I'm like okay I could like use this attention for now but I remember kind of feeling nauseous because I just like was so unattracted to him like I mean he was my type he was like tall and skinny but like I was so unattracted to his personality like oh god want to puke again just thinking about it and um after the concert 
I went to like my friend's room that was in his frat, like not his room. I went to like my friend's room in the frat where we were all like drinking and like smoking, whatever. My freshman year, I smoked a lot of weed. Um, I don't even like weed, but I was like, I just got sent to rehab for weed. So let me smoke a lot. And then (laughs) um, he like pulled me aside to like go upstairs. And I remember like not wanting to fuck him at all. I remember not even wanting to grind with him. And you know what I did? I went upstairs and fucked him like a dead fucking fish because I was very turned off. If I were to ever have a bad pussy review, it would definitely be from this moment. Maybe some other moments because it's like if I'm not into the guy, I'm not putting effort in, you know, (laughs) like it's just (laughs) or if the guy is not putting effort into me, then I'm not really putting effort into him because like you know it goes both ways but this guy i kind of just like laid there kind of like a dead fucking fish and i was so turned off i'm surprised my pussy even got wet um (laughs) and like i had so many opportunities to say no and i just didn't use a single opportunity to say no i could have just like because like he basically signaled me in his friend's room to like come upstairs with him and i could have just been like "Hmm, i kind of want to stay here I didn't do that. I could have like not grinded with him all night. I could have just like stepped to the side and been like, I really don't want to do this. I didn't. I just kept going. And um, like it was weird because I just I felt like I didn't have power over even like what I wanted. I felt like I like I was powerless over like what my intuition was telling me to do because I'm like, oh, God, like I already gave him the like the idea that I would fuck so like I kind of just have to fuck now like that was my mindset which is not like no 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 that, that's just that's not how it works <laughs> and um I want I again want to make it clear that I feel like this man had no idea what was going through my head or that I didn't want to fuck him and this man probably thought I was really into it which if he did I'm like I was laying there like a dead fucking fish. He probably thinks I'm the laziest person in the world or just like not very good in bed, but it's fine. And um, I just think that this idea of consent or being able to rescind consent was just so foreign to me and it it needs to be like more openly talked about. (laughs) This actually isn't even a... (laughs) This isn't even on topic, but I do find this like story funny because it kind of like leads into my next story. But... um, There was this guy that I hooked up with, and I'll never forget this. (laughs) Because it was, like, fucking hilarious. Oh, but I was hooking up with the guy at Kappa Sig, like, at the frat house. And we started fucking. And I was, like, I thought I was, like, being really nice by saying this, by the way. I was, like, oh, my God, like, it's totally fine that you have whiskey, dick. We can try again in the morning. Like, don't even worry about it. Like, we'll just go to sleep and try again. Anyways, (laughs) he didn't have whiskey, dick. He, he did not have whiskey dick. It was just a really fucking small penis that I did not feel at all. <laughs> like, it was really tiny. Um, so then I fell asleep, you know, as I do, because how was I supposed to get home? Um, and I wake up to this guy talking shit about me with his friends in the other room. <laughs> I remember he was saying, like... I just want this fucking girl to get out of my bed and leave so I can like have this space or something. And I was at first confused. I'm like, I thought we were going to fuck in the morning. And then it like all kind of clicked together that like his dick was just small. I embarrassed the shit out of him. So then I remember being like, hey, I can leave whenever you just either have to drive me home or get me an Uber. And he's like, dude, get yourself an Uber. I was like, I don't have money. So I'll just I'll like chill here to like you can get me home because you did stick your dick in me. So, you know, I feel like you owe me that. <laughs> and like I, I literally did not have money to get home. And uh, he reluctantly drove me home. And then after that day. He never made eye contact with me at the frat. Um, he, if he saw me, he'd like kind of walk in the other direction or try to just avoid me in general. Um, but I am sorry, dude. I did not expect someone. Like, I did not expect that small of a dick. I really didn't. I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry for embarrassing you. I'm sorry for making you feel insecure. It was from the most genuine intentions. Um, and that was definitely a rock bottom. <laughs> having to beg basically tell a guy i'm not gonna leave till you either drive me home or get me an uber because i couldn't afford to leave and i was not gonna walk home in my heels like you know it was definitely a rock bottom and um 
So about uh, midway through my freshman year, I found hooking up with men to get harder and fucking harder because for one mediocre looking guy at the University of Arizona, one, one mediocre looking dude, there were like five bitches he'd be rotating. Like there would like always be a bitch on him. Like always. It was like five girls had a fight for the attention of one mediocre looking dude. And like the girls at the University of Arizona, beautiful. So he had so many beautiful girls to fucking pick from. I, I will never understand it. And like, I guess that's not how the real life is, but like, I will never understand that. Um, hey, Bert. Uh, uh, wow. Okay, cool. <laughs> so guys at the U of A, especially my freshman and sophomore year, didn't really find me that attractive. They weren't that attracted to me um, until my like junior and senior year when I got my boobs on. And then that's when like, I started getting a lot of attention from guys, you know, go figure. <laughs> Um, but I was really like bottom of the barrel at the U of A for my freshman year. And it's one of the, well, not even my freshman year. Girls there are just beautiful. And I don't want to go back there because honestly, there's a lot less, weirdly enough, a lot less attractive girls in LA than there are in Scottsdale. So I, I'd rather stay here and be very attractive <laughs> or semi-attractive, you know, you know, got to be a little humble. Um, but I think I was dead ass the girl guys would hook up with as a last option. <laughs> and I'm not even saying this like, <laughs> like I genuinely think I was like the last option for guys to hook up with at the U of A. <laughs> like when my friends weren't down, they'd then come to me. <laughs> I wish I was joking. I'm really not though. <laughs> And maybe I'm being a little fucking hard on myself, <laughs> but that is literally how it felt. Like I was not a single person's first choice. I was not asked on the date dashes when I was like a freshman or a sophomore. I only got asked on one date dash and it was with a guy I was dating. <laughs> and even then, I don't think he wanted me to come because I wasn't 21 yet. <laughs> and I got like all of my IDs taken. <laughs> um, so I looked at like all of my options to be able to like hook up with guys and I found dating apps to be the best option. So I started using Tinder religiously because one, I already knew that they were interested in me if they matched me on Tinder. I I do think that my personality played a big part in me not being in a sorority, weirdly freshman and sophomore year mattered to guys like hooking up with you. So I feel like my freshman and sophomore year, when they met me or they knew I wasn't in a sorority, they're like, oh, ew, she's gross. But like they matched with me on Tinder. They didn't know a single fucking thing about me, you know? So I knew they were down already. Two, I knew I was down by like looking at their profile picture. And three, if I was really horny and didn't find anyone to fuck at a party, I could go on Tinder and I could sometimes get fucked that night. Um, and this is just a reminder that I did not have a vibrator at the time. So my vagina would literally like it, it would have a fucking heartbeat from how horny I constantly was. I like my shorts could rub my clit walking to class and I would like literally sometimes have to contain myself because I'm like oh, I need to get fucked like I don't know what was with my sex drive like it was crazy like I needed to constantly get fucked um <laughs> sometimes even in class like I would just get so fucking horny I'm like I need to fuck someone like right fucking now um <laughs> So there was like, there was literally one guy from Tinder I think I sexted with for like six months or something crazy like that. And like, I literally never met him in real life. Uh, <laughs> when I wanted to come, he was there to send me solicited dick pics and videos. And I really want to emphasize the solicited because the solicited ones I can get really turned off on with, but the unsolicited ones, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Also like, oof, oof. I, I can't I can't with a specifically unsolicited uncircumcised penis ones because I, I mean in the U.S. at least there's not a lot of uncircumcised penises and when I see one I'm like what the fuck is that naked mole rat <laughs> I'm very sorry to men who aren't it's just to me it looks not very pleasant I haven't been exposed to it a lot I like the look of a you know circumcised penis but um anyways I don't know why I'm like one of the only girls I know that gets like incredibly fucking turned on by these dick pics. 
so turned on and um it's funny because this man actually subs to me now and i know this because he like told me on snapchat was like oh my god your fucking only fans content paul it's so fucking hot whatever whatever um <laughs> that was on my old snapchat i got my snapchat from like a year ago deleted since uh you know it uh i, I guess you can't tag your only fans directly and they just they didn't give me a warning it was just zoot you are gone missy <laughs> um and there was one guy who was pretty funny <laughs> because I remember I took Molly that day at like the University of Arizona's um, like fair. It, what was it like homecoming fair or something like that? It was the one in spring, though, not in fall. So it was like the fair and I like took Molly and then I like went to the carnival, by the way, like with no money. So I'm like, fuck, I can't even go on any of the rides. Like I really can't enjoy anything. I think my friend paid for one of the rides for me because like that's how fucking poor I was. <laughs> and um <laughs> so I was like rolling just kind of walking around and I was like I need to fuck someone like immediately so I got on tinder found a guy who was like visiting from USC at some tournament and he was down to fuck and like he, I think he ubered me over to him and he was like just really surprised like that I was like down a clown off the bat I was like I I am literally here to get fucked <laughs> and I was I was there to get fucked man um uh i think i think he said something along the lines of like i have never been able to like fuck a girl so easy off of tinder but hey a bitch was fucking horny there's nothing wrong with it you know there's nothing wrong with it um <laughs> i actually made like i hung out with him and his friends for a little bit first like we were drinking whatever like hanging out and then I made everyone listen to dubstep and then they were like, let's like try Lewis the child. And I'm like, oh, I haven't heard of that. They started playing it. I'm like, no, this shit sucks. Like I gave like a disgusted look. So then they started playing dubstep again. And I want to emphasize the fact that they didn't start playing dubstep again because they liked me or anything like that. I don't think they've ever thought about me a day again after that. I think it was just solely because um, this guy was trying to get laid and usually girls were a little harder to fuck than I was at that moment But I really wanted to get fucked <laughs> And um, you know, we fucked to some dubstep and I don't think I've talked to him since And um, <laughs> no, here's the part. Here's the part that scarred me forever <laughs> So I remember talking to this guy on tinder and I had his like Instagram and everything and I uh, went over to his place where he was staying and started to hook up um, and uh, like we were like getting naked, like making out, etc. And like some voice just screamed at me and was like, stop this right now. And uh, I never really had a voice scream at me um, the way my voice was screaming at me that night. Um, I had never had a voice be like, stop hooking up with this guy like right now. Like never had that before. And um, I was like, okay, well then I have to listen. So I told him that I just wanted to like go to sleep and I wanted to stop hooking up. And um, you know, uh, I, we were like, all right, let's go to sleep. And I, I do remember this like little voice told me that I should leave and I should get out. And um, I, couldn't <laughs> and I mentioned this before but I was really poor with maybe maybe two hundred dollars probably less than that in my bank account um you know I worked at a cape crate place at the University of Arizona for like maybe four hours a week at like eight dollars an hour at the time and um my parents like allowed me like I think one lift or something like that a week like one or two and I had already used them up and, you know, they'd always threaten me, like, if I use more than the allotted lifts, like, they'll, they'll stop helping me out altogether. And um, I usually relied on the guys, like, to Uber me home or drive me home in the mornings. Um, and there was one thing I did use a lot, and it was, like, this taxi service that accepted cat cash from the University of Arizona. And cat cash was just, like, the campus version of cash that's like not actual cash so like if your parents wanted to make sure like you don't buy alcohol or something like that they would give you cat cash because all all the money can go to is like non-alcoholic services kind of thing um but the the that taxi service closed at 1 a.m and it was definitely after 1 a.m and they wouldn't open again until the morning and um so you know i went to sleep with this guy in his bed 
And um, then I woke up to him kind of shoving his fingers and dicking me. And I remember like in a very shaky voice, I was like, um, what are you, oh my God, my voice is getting shaky. I was like, uh, what are you, what are you doing? Kind of like in the voice I have right now. And um, I was like, P please stop, like, please fucking stop. And he didn't like, he, I don't think he answered me at all. He just like stopped and like, we went back to bed and I like went in a little um, corner in the bed, um, like on the other side. So like, he couldn't touch me. Um, and I wanted to like, cry and throw up and hurl and I actually want to throw up right now even like talking about it um I had so many emotions like tied to this because I remember like even my therapist said after well like why did you stay if you didn't feel safe and um the answer was I didn't really feel like I had options um I was in the middle of Tucson like two miles from my dorm at the time and uh honestly walking back to my dorm was probably more dangerous than like staying at this guy's place i don't even know if it was like dangerous to stay at this guy's place but i was like for sure like violated you know um and it would have been wise for uh me to spend my money on an uber home but i was scared because i really didn't have a lot of money to work with in my bank account and um you know i wasn't like extremely thinking clearly like i was for sure drunk he was for sure drunk and um I had like men and women ask like why I stayed in the same bed as him if I didn't feel safe, you know, just kind of questioning why I did what I did. And um, I literally didn't know like where else I was supposed to go. Um, I was never really taught the boundary setting and social skills for like a situation like this. Um, I was just like very young and confused and didn't really know how to feel. And um, I do kind of like consider this being raped um, and it's, it's kind of funny because, you know, my parents always taught me to like watch out, like to not be raped by random people on the street or like I always thought it would be like violent and like I would immediately know that I was raped and I didn't like immediately know that I was raped. Oh, God, I really like don't even like using that word. Um, I remember I like felt really nauseous and um, I knew something had just happened that like wasn't right. And um, it was hard for me to even say the word rape, but it still is hard for me to say the word. Um, and it took at least a month, I think, or something like that to even say I was. Um, even now, I like to use the word sexually assaulted because it just it doesn't seem as aggressive. Uh, and I feel like people don't doubt you as much when you say you were sexually assaulted versus, you know, raped. And um as little girls, we were like, I feel like we're taught to be scared of like big scary men in the streets and alleyways and like, watch out. I mean, I guess this was like a random guy off of Tinder, but it's like, I did have a lot of his information. We were talking for a few days, like whatever. Like he didn't look big and scary and like something I should be like afraid of. Um, and I feel like I personally wasn't taught to be scared of men at bars or men, um, you know, friends even. And, um, I was even sexually assaulted by one of my friends years before this in high school. So when this happened, it just, it brought up so many emotions and I didn't know like what to do with myself. Um, it was really difficult because I could tell this guy had no idea what he just did to me or how it affected me. And um, he was like, he was drunk. He was like, I think a little belligerent because I just don't even think it registered in his brain that I told him I didn't want to fuck and then he still shoved his dick in me, you know, while I was fucking knocked out sleeping. Um, and the next morning he like tried to kiss me goodbye and was calling me babe and baby and it was just like weird and I remember like trying to get away from him as soon as possible in the morning and um, I ended up just getting an Uber home with my parents, uh, like Lyft, because I'm like, I am literally in like a dangerous situation. Um, and I do remember I puked when I left. I was so down bad and my whole body was shaking. And um, I just, I remember being terrified. Um, I remember the feeling of when I was in high school and everyone um, stayed friends with the guy who sexually assaulted me. And um, they were like, that that's just how he is, man. <laughs> and I was the only one getting pissed off and saying something about it. Uh, they They were almost getting annoyed with me that like I was making it difficult for the friend group by not wanting my friends to be friends with him. They're like, well, we're not friends with him. And I'm like, then why are you talking to him at a party? Like, that's fucking weird. 
Like, why do you follow him on Instagram? Why do you like his photos? Why do you comment? And you know what? All of those friends are fucking fake friends. Um, like every single one. Um, and I remember my friends in high school not thinking it was a big deal. Although this guy would like kind of make points that like scare me and terrify me because he thought he was being like funny and like I think it kind of turned him on a little bit. Um, he would send me like weird text messages and he would like come up from behind me at a party and be like boo to the point I was like shaking and I'm like someone doesn't do that without getting some kind of like pleasure from doing that you know it's like he knew how scared I was he knew how vulnerable I was it's like how can you not see a girl fucking shaking and crying you know being around you <laughs> and um every like every single one of my friends and validated my feelings so when this experience happened like my freshman year I was so scared of my feelings not being taken seriously and I was scared that all of this was like secretly my fault and that um I shouldn't be feeling the way I was feeling because you know this stuff just kind of happens and um the first uh like two months two-ish months after this happened I would fuck anyone on tinder who was hot who was down and um i wondered for a while after i was sexually assaulted like why i would want to fuck everyone and um after some time i think i realized i was trying to prove to myself that like i could fuck when i wanted to fuck and um it was like some kind of control thing uh like you know i was running the show of when i did and didn't want to fuck and it provided some security for the two months but then you know afterwards I was kind of forced to deal with my emotions some more and it didn't that just didn't feel good to me anymore and um it's kind of like I didn't have power over myself in the moments I was like sexually assaulted so I tried to take my power back by like fucking as many guys as I could where I felt safe you know um just like something like that uh and after the two-ish months of doing that um my mindset shifted and that's when I started having like a lot of sleepovers with guys where I wouldn't do anything with them. Like, you know, I'd like kiss them or something like that. Like I would cuddle, but I like wouldn't take my clothes off and I wouldn't fuck them. And uh, I like wanted to feel safe and I wanted to feel like when I said no, it just, it had some meaning and doing that for me made me feel like safe. And like, I did have control over my sexual experiences and I just wanted to get some of that power back that I lost. And um, so many people were like, shitting on me for using my vibrator next to a guy with no intention of fucking him and for me like that really helped me heal like you know there were definitely layers like I wanted attention but it helped me heal because like I I think that was like one of the first guys I had a sleepover with with no intention of like doing anything with and like it just felt so necessary for me to be able to like be in control in that situation and be able to say no I don't want to fuck and like him not fuck me you know like him not sexually assault me in my sleep um and then after some time, my vagina kind of became like the sacredish temple where I didn't want anybody touching me for a while. And I still have a lot of issues with my relationships with guys. And um, I didn't have sex for like 15 months at one point. And I felt great and more confident than I had ever been up until that point um, because I felt like safe within myself for the first time in a while. And it was kind of one of those, one of the first times I like set a boundary like that for myself. And um. I think the message I want to get across here is you can literally decide like not to fuck someone and their dick is like about to go in you. <laughs> you can literally be fucking and decide you don't want to fuck anymore and it's okay. And if he continues fucking you after you say you don't want to fuck, that's sexual assault. And you can go home with a guy then decide you just want to have a non-sexual sleepover and that's okay. And I just, I don't know why I was never taught these things growing up and like I was, you know, slut shamed by my parents for even wanting to have sleepovers with guys. And like, I was slut shamed for everything. So this like idea of consent was never really talked about. And I feel like I really had to learn the hard way. And um, by learning the hard way, it's made me a lot colder and cuntier towards men. And um, especially towards men, I see preying on soft spoken women. And I was one of those soft spoken women that was like easy to kind of take advantage of or manipulate or whatever. And um. You know, I was I was definitely one of those girls that like it was easier for guys to like prey on. And I wish w women w could like stand up for themselves more. And sometimes it doesn't even matter if they do. I've had a lot more success being a cunt and being assertive. And men are a lot more scared to try to pull anything with me because of the cunt that I've become. Like ask any of my friends. I have yelled at men at music festivals. I have thrown hands at guys 
for either being like creepy towards me or my friends and I'm a lot more reactive than I think than the average person just because of like the stuff I've been through and um I, I do think that if you are strong in how you feel and you're in tune with yourself it's a lot easier to not be like gaslit or like you know to be gaslit into thinking it wasn't a big deal or that didn't actually happen the way you remember because I mean that's what happened to me years ago you know I was just gaslit all the fucking time and it took years of me working on myself to become this person and what sucks knowing is like in my situations I'm not saying this is every situation but in my situations if I would have been more assertive and cuntier and listened to my intuition I really could have like avoided these kinds of situations and this is just for me I know this isn't every situation and um you know, it isn't the case for every single person and some people are loud and cunty and it still happens to them. And like my heart really does go out to those people. And I'm just speaking from experience um, and hoping it can, you know, help someone else. Um, but just to kind of end this on a more positive note, this sexual assault has been a monumental part of my healing. <laughs> oh my God, when I got acupuncture back in December, it was crazy because she hit a point that I just like kept reliving it for like a week. And then afterwards, it did feel like a big weight was like lifted off my shoulder. Like I had processed a lot of the trauma and I still have a lot more trauma to process, but at least I got to process a lot of it. Um, it was just crazy because when I kept reliving it, I got a fever. My whole body was shaking. Like I was having such a physical reaction and kind of like reliving like literal the moment, but even more intense because like I, I don't think I got a fever after I was actually it was just crazy. And um, I think there is still a lot of trauma around people like not believing me or invalidating my experience because how could someone who dresses as slutty as me or presents themselves as slutty as me be sexually assaulted when I put myself out there, like, you know, how I do on the internet? Well, when I was sexually assaulted, <laughs> I actually wasn't like this on the internet. I was a lot classier, but I, you know, I, I don't have really any interest in being like classy. And, um, that's the big reason why I've become so picky with men. And it's funny because I've been picky with men for a while, but I've been picky with men and still happen to choose the wrong ones because I don't think I've, you know, healed enough of my trauma to not try to like trauma bond with men who like remind me of my father and blah, 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 blah. So now I'm just trying to choose no one. And um, I have actually noticed uh, after these incidents, the way I maneuver around men I'm like sexually interested in is just, it's so much different different like not really around my guy friends but around men I'm interested in is like so fucking weird like my voice becomes a lot more childlike um I don't want to like do anything to piss them off it's like I just have like this fear inside of me that like I need to like tiptoe around them to not do anything like crazy or bad and um I literally act like a person I barely even recognize because that's not me I'm usually very strong willed to have a loud voice I am assertive like you know there's well I had depending I don't like disagreements when people disagree with me that's when I start getting a little more childlike again and I'm um, questioning myself but it's like it's just weird that I can't even be myself around a guy who I'm fucking or a guy I like uh I actually can get more into this in like a different podcast um because it's really interesting just like the psychology of it and it's just it makes me not want to date for a while because it's like if I don't like the person I am while I'm dating someone like why date anyone it's just you know it's fucking weird the psychology um anywho um let me know if you guys have any follow-up questions about this oh today's this has been a lot <laughs> um thank you if you stay till the end uh ooh, yeah um as always follow me on social media um my socials will be on its deals itsdeels.com and hopefully i have everything back thanks for joining